Hello. We are experiencing a potential world ending event. Here is your emergency directory. Say option one if you want to receive a cold beer. Say option two if you want to hear the Bro4 Squad review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Option one. Say option three if you want Jeff to give Brian a thousand dollars. Three options? You gotta be kidding me. I'll still go with one. Welcome back into the Bro 4 Squad podcast. This is our review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 19, entitled Option 2. I am Jeff Hornacek. Along with me, as always, is the mad scientist, Brian Banner, to grade this episode as we do all of our TV episodes on our four Bro 4 Squad criteria, acting, story, our favorite scene, and any theories going forward. Now, Banner, although you selected option one, I actually don't have a cold beer to bring you, so we'll just do the review instead. Uh, and why well, don't you start with... in that with... case, I'll go option three. No, that that was a fake one anyway, because I knew you don't have the patience to make it to three options. So what did you think of the acting and cast in this episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, first off... It literally, as you're reading the title of the episode, I just figured out why the episode was called Option 2. And yeah, we, we often... did the cold open, and we practiced it like four times. I didn't get it until literally 30 seconds ago. So <laughs> I think that says more about me than, than the show. Um, as far as the acting and cast goes, though, um, I'll say it. No, I, I can't say it. But say a, certain, it. a certain individual that I do not like did a very good job. Oh. Henry Simmons is Mac? Maybe. There we go. Henry Simmons is Mac. Him and the uh, yo-yo breakup scene, basically, with N- Natalie Cordova Buckley, I thought was one of the more powerful parts of the episode. It was so definitely... I, I love that scene as well, and I was glad that happened because we've talked about this a lot. Yo-yo has just been absolutely batshit crazy this whole season. I know for good reason. She's been through a lot. But Mac, I mean, you can't be in a relationship with her right yeah, now. She's and he's, all over the place. He's been there for her through everything, and everything that he does is has been, I mean, to help her out. He went out and almost died on the boat to get her her arms and everything, and she's so ungrateful to him that she kind of deserves it. And I thought, again, I, I hate to say it, but you have to give credit where credit is due. He did a great job. Yeah. Uh, One guy that I just want to say is really distracting me on this show. I don't think he'll pop back up again, but Jake Busey as the Candyman. So distracting. Takes me out of it, man. I can only see Gary Busey's son. I can't see anything. The only way I want him coming back is if it, like, just cuts to him and he's going, the Candyman can. No. That actually sounds like the only way that his performance could become more distracting. I, I would like to see that. All right, story in this episode, actually a pretty confined um, plot in this one. We basically had Daisy investigating that lead to save Coulson, uh, which had that brief Infinity War reference with the Candyman. And then, of course, the team hunkered down in their own base fighting off the alien threat. So obviously there was the big end scene with Talbot that's sort of going to drive things forward, but not a lot of plot progression here. But I thought one of the more fun episodes just because it was so action-oriented. What did you think? I liked it because... With the, uh, aside from Daisy, we actually get the team kind of coming back together. They've been mm-hmm. fractioned apart in, in ideologies and what they want to do and how they think they should proceed um, for so long in this season. And you saw that when they had the little meeting and then you have Colson go, no, all right, look, everybody shut the fuck up. This is what we're going to do. And, and everybody was, was more of a team uh, again, which was refreshing. I love the unapologetic fits that we have now. He's like, yeah, Daisy, I tried to kill you. Show of hands people in this room who haven't made a mistake. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Um, yeah, so the whole team sort of, like you said, they're coming together as much as they can. They're all like, we've been through a lot of shit the past few weeks, but um, right now we need family dinner. This is like when somebody is about to get traded, but then they trade, they like fail their physical so they can't get traded. And they're like, well, I'm back. What's up, guys? Yeah, and it's, like, sort of awkward, but you are still on the same team with them. So you're like, hey, I hope that big toe heals up because we got more games to play. All right, best scene here. A lot of action set pieces in this one. I thought 
aesthetically everything was shot really well. Um, and then of course we had the whole Talbot shit at the end, which I'm still not sure if I like or not. I think we kind of have an idea where it's going. Uh, which scene stood out to you in this episode? Um, I'll let you have the scene that we briefly mentioned earlier, but I thought the scene at the end where the aliens are coming in, they have the fire in the barrels, and you've got Coulson, Mac, May, um, Deke, and um, Fitz all in there just kind of doing their own thing. The way that, that it was shot and the way they were taking down the aliens, and the aliens were coming in and out of the shadows and in and out of the light, um, very, very cool, very creative. Um, and again, this is kind of a reoccurring theme in this in this show, or especially this season. It's feeling more and more like a movie, the way that they're s- shooting some of these action set pieces, mm-hmm. which is really cool that they're able to do that in a uh, TV show. Yeah, and this one really felt like they took advantage of more of the Friday night time slot. We had a lot of – we had a sort of a, an a homage – there was an homage sort of to the Avengers. Someone got speared through the back and fucking yeah. died uh, like a kebab. That was pretty cool. Um, that scene you were referring to with the, the fire lighting the room looked like a tribal council from Survivor. But then also the team was like protecting the last slice of pizza from hungry middle school kids storming in on them. Hold on. Hold on. We have pizza? No, I shouldn't have even brought that up. I'm sorry. Jesus. Uh, my, so I'll go honorable mention, of course, to the Yo-Yo Mac breakup scene, but another scene that I really liked, which just preceded uh, sort of the hunker down fight in the base where they just went after their, their last stand, was when um, Mac and Deke, I think, first encountered the aliens in the hallway, and they were, like, ducking and hiding in the shadows. Um, and Deke <laughs> kind of freaked out like a little bitch which is my favorite version of Deke because I think it's his truest form. It's his final form, if you will. All right, this one ends on a bit of a, I don't want to say a cliffhanger, but you're like, what just happened um, as Talbot sort of, com- well, it's not sort of, he completely infuses with the Gravitonium, which, what the fuck is the team doing just like sitting that still in the room with him and, and Gemma? But I digress. Um, what are any theories you have going forward? And I got to be honest, I know Trend Pimp always references this. I did see the next time on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so I'm kind of cheating here. But what do you think for as far as theories? Well, as is tradition, I didn't watch the next time on. Um, and I, I don't know what's going to happen. They probably won't do something like this, but I hope in the next couple of weeks. And this is spoilers um, for the show as well as Infinity War, if you haven't seen that a little bit. But... Um, I hope that somebody disappears, whether it's like an ancillary, mm-hmm. secondary, or a thirdary character that we only see sometimes, um, or even one of the main characters. Just somebody disappears for three or four episodes, kind of goes into dust like they do in Infinity War, and then come back. Don't need to explain how they come back, but just show that this is in the same um, timeline and the same everything else as... Um, Infinity War, because I think that's really important for, for us as fans to know that these are all still in the same uh, timeline. Yeah, I mean, Black Panther, they, they for all intents and purposes, could have sidestepped. It took place in the isolated country of Wakanda. Uh, without spoiling the end of Infinity War for anyone out there, but this they can't avoid that um, if they want to at all pretend like they're in the same connected universe. So, uh, two theories I have. What is Daisy going to do with uh, Jai Ying? Is she going to pull a Whitehall and cut up her dead corpse to save Coulson? That's a little bit dark, but you have to think that that's part of um, the, the prophecy that Yo-Yo saw, where like you have to let him die, because this seems like a pretty viable way to save him. And then also, yes, I cheat a little bit by watching the next time on, but I think Talbot is going to become Graviton from the comics. I know uh, General Talbot is not the character that that happens to in the comics, but who Based cares? on his his look next episode, uh, I think that's kind of what they're going for. And the skill set is right there. I mean, it's the exact same thing. He's just crushing skulls left and right um, when he doesn't get what he wants. Like his server at a restaurant brings out cold uh, tacos. And I was just... about to say, if you say, God damn, you said tacos. Out of all the foods you could say, you say tacos and pizza on this episode. I think I might be going to get tacos right after this. I, so. if, the, if taco pizza was a thing or pizza tacos was a thing. It is. At CeCe's Pizza, it's definitely a thing. Yeah, but that's CeCe's and that's barely pizza. I disagree, and we will end on a high note, which is CeCe's Pizza. Sponsor us. We would very much appreciate that. I'm going to go get some macaroni and cheese pizza because that's the shit. 
All right, guys, we have been the Bro4 Squad podcast for the med scientist, Brian Banner. I'm the mayor, Jeff Hornacek. Be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube, Bro4 Squad, three words. If you could leave us a five-star iTunes review, we'd appreciate it. Follow us on Twitter, at Bro4 Squad, and check out everything that we're doing at our website, bro4squad.com. Thank you, guys, and we'll catch you next week. Mac and cheese pizza? They're both so good separate. Why even? Oh, but it's so good together. Oh, my God.